So friends, today we will discuss about a simple shortcuts to solve the problems in electricity by using Kirchhoff's laws. See, uh, this video is created just to engage the students in lockdown because many of the students are missing classes and they are unable to follow their colleges. So this is just small uh, trial to help the students. Let me discuss uh, what is the shortcut here. So let us see here, this is a circuit diagram, it was a previous year question here. So this question can be solved by using the concept of Kirchhoff's first law. So to understand Kirchhoff's first law, first of all, let us see the circuit here. Okay. So now this is a simple circuit. What does Kirchhoff's first law explains here? The sum of the currents meeting at the junction is equal to sum of the currents leaving the junction. Sum of the currents meeting at the junction is equal to sum of the currents leaving at the junction. So you can write I1 plus I2 is equal to I3 plus I4 plus I5. This is the meaning of this. So these two currents are meeting at the junction. The three currents are leaving the junction. This is called as Kirchhoff's first law. So based on first law, we can solve this problem very easily. So if you observe two amperes and two amperes, this is one junction. These two currents are meeting at the junction going to become 4 amperes. So this is 4 amperes here. 1 ampere has left out from this. So what is remaining here? Only 3 amperes is remaining here because this is a junction 2. This is the first junction, second junction. In the second junction, when 1 ampere leaves the junction, the remaining is 3 amperes. So this is the sum of the currents. It is divided into two parts, 1 ampere and 3 amperes. So in this 3 amperes, if 1.5 amperes is leaving from the junction, this junction 3. So 1.3 is leaving means what is left here? This is going to be 1.7. Is it? So this is the first option is the correct option here. I think you understood. It's a very simple thing. Let me discuss once again here. This is the first junction. In this first junction, 2, 2 amperes are meeting. It is going to become 4 amperes. In this 4 amperes, 1 ampere is leaving. The remaining is 3 amperes. In this 3 amperes, 1.5 amperes is leaving. The left out is 1.7 because the sum of these two is 3 amperes. So this is purely based on Kirchhoff's first law. So let us discuss about the Kirchhoff's uh, second law. So before going to Kirchhoff's second law, we can solve one more model based on this. So try to understand this one more question. It's a little bit complex question, but nothing is there in this. It's very simple to do. So let us see what is going to happen here. So 3 amperes and 2 amperes. And 3 and 2, they are going to be 5 amperes over here. So this is a 5 amperes. So what is going to happen here? So this is going to be 5 amperes here. So in this 5 amperes, if you observe what is going to happen, let us see here. So this is going to be 4 amperes here. And here 2 amperes is coming in this way. So 2 plus 3 is going to be 5. Okay. So if you observe here, 2 and 3 is going to be 5. And uh, this 4 amperes is coming in this direction. Two, 1 ampere is leaving. 2 amperes are leaving. So 1 plus 2 is going to be 3 over here. So we understood that is going to be 3 over here. So with this 5 amperes, if 3 amperes are going upwards, what is left? 2 amperes is left out. So try to understand here. So let us see here what is going to happen here. So 2 and 4 combined together, it is going to be 6 amperes over here. And 6 amperes and 2 amperes are going to meet at the junction. So therefore, it is going to be 8 amperes. So I is going to be 8 amperes of the current here. So second option is correct. So let me discuss once again here if you want. So how to solve this problem? Nothing is there here. These are the not. This is not the data given over here. So it's very simple to do. I'll tell you in an easier way. So 2 plus 3 is going to be 5 amperes over here. Okay. So here if you understand 5 amperes. Here 2 amperes is going in this direction. 1 ampere is going in this direction. The meaning here is it was... 3 amperes before leaving the junction. So if uh, among with this 5 amperes, 3 amperes is going upwards means 2 amperes is going downwards. Okay. So and 4 is up and 2 is do 2 is downwards. These two are meeting at this place. It is going to be 6 amperes. So at this junction, 6 is going like this, 2 is going like this. They combine together, meet and it is going to become answer is 8 amperes. It's a very simple question. Okay. 
So this is the question here. So I think you understood this type of questions. So these two questions are based on first law. Okay. So now we shall discuss some of the questions based on second law here. Okay. So this is a typical Wheatstone bridge. Before going to that, we saw some more problems based on that type. Okay. You just see here. So it's a very simple question. We can solve this question easily. I think you understood Kircha's first law. So once you understood Kircha's first law, it is very easy to understand the remaining things here. So let us solve this problem here. It's a very simple problem. It is based on series resistance and parallel resistance here. Let us see here. 3 plus 3 is going to be 6 here. So 6, this combined together it is going to be 6. And 6 is in parallel with 6. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 is in parallel with 6. So when two resistance which are same, then the answer will become half of these two. Because 6 into 6 by 6 plus 6 is 12 by, what is happening? 6 in, I mean 3, that is this is 6 and this is 6. 6, 6 are 36 divided by 12. So answer is 6. Answer is 3 here. So what I am going to say is, it's a very simple question. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6, 6 is parallel. So answer is 6 into 6 by 6 plus 6. Again 3 here. So this 3 combined together it is 3. 3 plus 3 is again. So this is combined together it is 3 ohms. So 3 plus 3 is again 6. This is 6 and 6 is again 3 here. Because 6 into 6 by 6 plus 6 is 3. So this combined together it is 3. 3 is in series with this 3 again. 3 is in series. This combined together it is total result for this is going to be 3. And this 3 and this 3 is going to be 6 here. The complete 6 is in parallel with 6. So 6 into 6 by 6 plus 6 again 3 here. So this combined together the total circuit is 3 here. 3 and 3 is going to be 3 plus 3 which is 6 here. Finally it is 6 total circuit is 6. Upper circuit is 6. This is 3 ampere. So answer is 6 into 3 by 6 plus 3 according to parallel connection. So 18 by 9, the answer is 2 amperes. The second option is the correct answer. So let me discuss once again here. So 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 into 6 is 3 again. This 3 and this 3 is 6. 6 into 6 is again 3. This combined with the total is 3. This 3 is in series with 3 ohms here. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 into 6 by 6 plus 6 is again 3 here. So this 3 is in series with 3 here. That is combined with the 6. Again total circuit above is 6. Below is only 3. So it is 6 into 3 by 6 plus 3 is again, 6 3 is 18 by 9, that is 2 amperes is the correct answer. So this is the next circuit here. So let me discuss about a little bit complex circuits. Okay, so to understand the next circuit, it's very simple to solve the problem here. It appears to be very complex, but nothing is there in that set of the circuit. You can solve it very easily. So to understand this one, you should know what is the meaning of Wheatstone bridge first of all. So this is a Wheatstone bridge. Okay, so Wheatstone bridge. How to solve this Wheatstone bridge? It's a very simple thing here. So Wheatstone bridge is nothing but it is of this shape having three, I mean four resistance P, Q, R and S here. So first of all you should know what is Kirchhoff's second law. Kirchhoff's second law says that the algebraic sum of the currents in a loop is going to be zero. The algebraic sum of the potential drops in the loop is going to be zero. So what is the meaning of algebraic potential drops here? For example, you are going to consider the first loop and this is the second loop. We have divided into two loops. So first of all, what is the basic concept to understand this uh, Wheatstone bridge is, this is the circuit you have taken, that is IR. So when the current is moving in this direction, the meaning here is this is IR potential, this is lower potential. It's a very simple thing here, common sense if you apply. When the water is moving in this direction, the meaning here is this is higher potential, this is lower potential. Water flows from high position to lower position. Here also, current always flows from higher potential to lower potential. Current is moving in this direction means you have to decide that this is higher and this is lower. So this is going to be the loop here. So here, current is moving in this direction, that means this is higher, this is lower. Okay, and loop is in this direction. What is the meaning of this here? When the direction of current is here in this direction loop is also in this direction so loop is also along the higher to lower from higher to lower means it is 
minus i into r. So you have come from second year to first year again. That means you are poor, which gives you negative feelings here. Again, when the current is coming in the opposite direction, that is higher to lower, you are going from lower to higher along the loop. That means you have gone from first year to second year. It is a positive sign. So you have jumped one class. Here you have jumped to the previous class because there are some subjects left here. It's very interesting. So what is happening? Let us see. This is about the thing here. So what is happening in this loop here? First of all, you consider one loop. So this is the first loop. In this first loop, if you consider, you have to take this triangle here. In this triangle, current in the same direction, loop in the same direction. Current in the same direction, loop in the same direction. Sign is minus. So minus I1 into P I have considered. Here if you observe in this loop here, current in the same direction, loop is clockwise, so loop is also in the same direction. So this is a galvanometer which is connected in the middle. So current and loops are in the same direction. So when the current and the loops are in the same direction, minus IG into G. Next, in this direction here, electric circuit, current is in this direction, loop is in this direction, both are opposite. So current in this direction, loop in this direction gives a positive sign here. So I have taken I2 into Q which is going to be 0. So the algebraic potential drops. What do you mean by potential drop? Potential drop is nothing but V is equal to I into R. It's a basic formula according to Ohm's law. So according to Ohm's law, I have applied instead of writing I into R as the resistance is P here, I have taken I1 into P. And this is IG into G. So that is based on Ohm's law. Instead of R, I have taken G here. Because galvanometer is a very, very high resistance here. It is a very high resistance here. So this is the first concept and this is the second formula based on the same second, I mean, Kirchhoff's second law here. So you have, if you observe the second loop here, in the second loop, you have to you have taken I3 into R. So loop is in this direction. Again, loop is in the same direction, current in the same direction gives you a negative sign. So I have taken I3 into R. Again here, loop is in this direction, current in the opposite direction gives you positive sign. I have taken I4 into S, isn't it? So next, in this way, loop is in this uh, loop is in this clockwise direction, whereas the current is in the direction. So both are opposite. Both are opposite. As both are opposite, gives you positive sign. That's why I have written IG into G. So this is the first equation, second equation based on Kirchhoff's second law I have drawn here. So it is said that if Wheatstone bridge is in balanced condition. Wheatstone bridge is in balanced condition. What is the meaning of this balanced condition? Balanced condition means no current flows across the galvanometer. What is the meaning of this? For example, this is the current I1. Here, this is the current I3. And this is the direction where the current is moving IG. I told you that this is high resistance. This is high resistance. When the current flows up to here, at this junction 1, current is very intelligent. It will think either to go this side or that side. And you know, current always follows low resistance path. What is the meaning here? Current always follows low resistance path. That's why it goes like this. This is a high resistance path. It tries to avoid it. So there is no current passing along this direction in the Wheatstone Bridge. Therefore, it is going to be zero. IG is going to be zero. As IG is going to be zero, this part is going to get cancelled. IG is going to be zero, this part is going to be get cancelled. So if you apply Kirchhoff's first law here, what are you going to see in this junction? You are seeing that I1, some of the currents meeting at the junction is equal to some of the currents leaving the junction. So you can take it as I3 plus IG, but this part is going to be zero, we have decided here. So therefore we got I1 equal to I3. And near the second junction, which is junction B here, if you observe, I2 is meeting at the junction, IG is also meeting at the junction, I4 is leaving the junction. Two currents are meeting at the junction, one current is leaving the junction. So you can write here, I2 plus IG is going to be I4. But according to the concept of high resistance path, IG is going to be zero, I2 is equal to I4. It's very simple. I2 is equal to I4 here. So I have got two equations here. Okay, so let me discuss what is going to happen here. So now, if you observe, how are we going to write the two equations now? You can write like this, I2Q is equal to I1P. Here you can write, I4S is equal to I3 into R. Okay, so this is there here. So this is called as balanced condition. 
let us consider this is equation number one or you can get the three and four here so this is three and this is four already we have proved that i1 equal to i3 so what is this here going get now i1 equal to i3 you are getting and i4 equal to i2 you are getting so if you divide these two you write three by four so i2 into q divided by i4 into s i1 into p i3 i3 into r here so according to the concept you have written that i1 equal to i3 i2 equal to i4 so as these two are same you are going to remove you are going to cancel here with this you get p by r is equal to q by s r you can also write p by q is equal to r by s both are same almost so p by r is equal to q by s or you take q down r upwards so this is called as balanced condition for a Wheatstone bridge okay so this is a balanced condition of a Wheatstone bridge now we can play with the circuits now let us see how to solve the remaining circuits i think it is understood by you easily so now let us go for the problem here now it's a very simple problem so what is that problem discussing here let us see and before going to the problem you should know how many types of weed zone bridges are there how many types of weed zone bridges are there so this is a little bit complex weed zone bridge here so these three resistors combined together it's going to be one weed zone bridge these three resistors are going to be one weed zone bridge so r and r are going to be series which is going to be in parallel with this r so r and r is nothing but 2r and which is parallel with this r you can write 2r into r by 2r plus r this is going to be 2r square by 3r r gets cancelled 2r by 3r going get so this complete circuit is going to be 2r by 3 this is also going to be 2r by 3 similarly this is also going to be 2r by 3 and this is also going to be 2r by 3 so you should know one thing here if you are going to consider a Wheatstone bridge like this and this is 2r by 3 2r by 3 2r by 3 and this is going to be 2r by 3 so these are the four circuits here and this is the junctions over here so when these are parallel these are series and parallel so let us imagine this completely it is going to be small r this is small r this is again small r this is equal to small r so r plus r is 2r and this is r plus r is also 2r so 2r into 2r by 2r plus 2r is going to be 4r square by 4r so this is going to be r here with this you will get one conclusion when four resistors are in the form of a bridge on bridge and four are same answer will be any one if four resistors are in the form of which one bridge and four resistors are same answer is equal to one of the resistance so with this now the answer is going to be 2r by 3 because smaller is imagined to be 2r by 3 so answer is 2r by 3 that is the third option isn't it so this is one complex which one bridge okay so this is one more which one bridge we are going to consider here so what is this which one bridge going to be here let us see So this is going to be a little bit complex Wheatstone bridge. But if you observe here, there are two Wheatstone bridges here, here and here. Okay. So according to Wheatstone bridge concept already, which I have discussed here, I said that this is going to be a galvanometer resistance. These are PQ and RS. In a balanced Wheatstone bridge, I told you it is going to be P by Q is equal to R by S. P by Q is going to be R by S, then no current flows across the galvanometer. So this is not considered here. In this upper Wheatstone bridge also this is not going to be considered in this lower Wheatstone bridge also it is not going to be considered here so upper Wheatstone bridge four resistors are same that means answer is any one answer is any one so totally upper Wheatstone bridge you bridge gives you the resistance is equal to two ohms here lower Wheatstone bridge also if you observe four resistors are same so in a Wheatstone bridge I just told you that four resistors are same then any one resistor is going to be the answer here so this is two and lower Wheatstone bridge also giving you two so upper Wheatstone bridge resistance is two lower is also two here so two into two by two plus two is going to be one ohm so this is about the second Wheatstone bridge okay so remaining concepts we'll discuss later. 
I mean, the remaining problems which are still complex, we'll discuss in the next class.